Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Celli, and this is joint work with Riccardo Collini Baldeschi, Christian Kroer, and Eric Sodomka. So, um, large internet advertising platforms use auction markets to match bidders, which in this case are advertisers, to their target audience at an appropriate price. And usually, when an advertiser needs to create a campaign, um, the advertiser is asked to specify some targeting criteria a budget and the duration of the campaign and then the platform um, uses a proxy bidder um, to place bids on the advertiser's behalf on the basis of uh, such information and on the basis of private information that the platform may compute now the question is how should the advertiser spend um, how do, should the platform spend the advertiser's uh, budget in an effective way so we want to avoid two, um, let's say, bad scenarios. The first one is the one in which we deplete the budget too early, uh, and therefore we miss potentially valuable future opportunities. And the second one is the one in which we um, complete the campaign while still having some budget which has not been uh, used. Now, um, the let's say the set of algorithms which are used um, to um, tackle these kind of problems are uh, pacing mechanisms, and there are two main families of pacing mechanisms. The first one uh, are um, multiplicative pacing uh, mechanisms, and the second one are probabilistic pacing mechanisms. And in this paper, we focus on the on the on the former, so on mechanisms that are based on this idea of applying a multiplicative bid shading factor to the bids of the of the advertiser now the basic setup that we use is the following we have a sequence of single item second price auctions and for each round of the auction the bidder observes evaluation vt and um, they have to place a bid vt if they uh, after placing this bid they observe the allocation xt saying which is basically a variable uh, which is equal to one if they want and to zero otherwise and if they want the item they also observe a price pt that they have to pay now the challenging thing here is that we have a total budget and that um, across the whole duration of the campaign we don't want to spend more than this budget p so if we were an omniscient budget constraint bidder, then everything would be simple if we are allowed to, to, to use fractional allocations, because we can just rank all the items in the decreasing order of bank per buck and pick items according to this order until we depleted the uh, until we deplete our budget. However, in practice, things are more complicated because we must make those decisions online. And um, there are um various algorithms that show how to how to do this online optimally but many of those algorithms focus on problems where the objectives um, are additively separable uh, for example um, usual objectives that are studied are um, optimizing the total click-through rate or the revenue of the allocation However, uh, we argue in the paper that in many settings, uh, the advertisers may be interested in objectives which are not adequately separable. And the, um, the specific objective that we consider in the paper is um, reaching a target distribution of impressions over some target population of users. And this um specific question is um, interesting for a number of practical applications um, the first one is enforcing uniform sampling on a target population of users to conduct to conduct for example uh, surveys the second one is uh, promoting businesses which are based uh, on two-sided markets in a, in a balanced way and finally um, all these techniques could be um, useful to perform online outreach to some population of users uh, following their real underlying distribution now even if this kind of question has a lot of uh, potential application uh, there is not an easy way 
uh, in practice that the advertisers can use to balance their allocations. Um, so the question that we wanted to ask in the paper is whether it's possible to achieve such distributional preferences by modifying existing multiplicative pacing frameworks. So there are some related works that study settings where the objectives are not additively separable. And in particular, the, set, the second paper that you can see here um, studies online allocation problems with non-separable objectives in settings like fairness across advertisers and load balancing. Um, however, the framework um, provided in this paper cannot be um, immediately adapted to model our um, distributional preferences. So we start from the framework of Balsero and others and uh, show how that can be modified to take um, our distributional preferences into account. So the model that we consider is one in which we uh, focus on a single bidder and the rest of the market is assumed to behave stochastically. And this is reasonable in this specific setting because in large scale markets, usually an individual bidder has almost no impact on the prices of the overall market. So what, what happens is that at each time T, um, the bidder observes a tuple um, with a valuation BT, a price PT, and a vector CT, which specifies the type of the item arriving, uh, arrived at time T. And this tuple is generated IAT from an unknown distribution P over the set of all possible input, C, input tuples. So we assume without loss of generality that um, prices and valuations are upper bounded by some constants um, um, B bar, um, bar B um, and uh, bar P. So the goal that we want to reach is the following. We are given a target distribution of categories, X hat, and we want to steer the realized distribution of impressions, um, which is the um, what you can see here in this formula, towards the target distribution. And we want to understand whether it's possible to incorporate such distributional preferences as a concave regularization term um, in the bidder's objective function. And the reason for which we want to try and do this is that this would enable to use existing multiplicative pacing um, frameworks with, with some minor modifications to tackle the problem. So this is crucial for um, let's say practical purposes, because it, 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 it would mean that um, we can put this solution in practice without having to completely rebuild um, existing um, pacing architectures. Now, the, we can start from the regularized offline allocation problem. And if we define uh, FT to be the reward function of the bidder at time t, and uh, if you're given a concave regularizer r, then this is the baseline that we consider um, to, to, to understand what are the performances of our algorithm. In particular, you can see that in the, in the green box, we have the, the budget constraints, and in the blue box, we have this regularization term, which we will use to model distributional preferences. Okay, and we have to take the expectation over the um, all the possible input sequences that we may observe. Now, the question is, how do we um, pick R to model the distributional preferences that we discussed? Um, one solution, which is what we propose in this paper, is using um, the notion of a parity array regularizer. Um, so if, you're, if we um, select T, D to be um, pseudo distance measure um, over um, the full dimensional simplex, then given a target distribution X hat, the parity regularizer basically takes um, a projection according to D of um, our realized distribution of impression X bar over the line segment generated by X hat. Okay, so this is like performing a Bregman projection. Um, and the idea behind the name is that we are measuring 
um, the distance in a way between the realized distribution of impression X bar and the array originated by the target distribution X hat. So we need some, we need some technical assumptions um, to perform the analysis. Um, and in particular, we need D to be a jointly convex function. Um, and also we need a, a, an upper bound on the value uh, on the values taken by D. And um, we need um, D to be L Lipschitz with respect to some LP norm in the second term. One example of a possible choice that we could use for D is any LP norm. And in particular, in the paper, we show that if we pick the L2 norm, we get, um, we get it's possible to provide a closed form solution to this, um, to this optimization problem of computing the, um, the parity array um, distance, which is particularly useful in practice because it improves scalability a lot. Now, the online algorithm that we use is based on the online mirror descent scheme um, uh, that was first proposed in this, um, in this paper by Balsero and others. And we show that even in our setting with our parity ray, regular, parity ray regularizer, we can attain a square root of t regret, which is optimal. The idea is that at each time t, the algorithms compare the actual expenditures uh, to the expected rate of expenditure per iteration. And if the actual expenditure is higher than the expected one, then the algorithm will lower the bit shading multiplier and vice versa. Okay, and um, addition, in addition to that, the algorithm also compares the target distribution over categories at time t to the realized one. And if the target category um, at time t would skew uh, would, would cause an undesired skew in the distribution moving away from the target, then uh, such category will be um, uh, penalized through some adjustments of the dual variables. Now, um, ideally, the bidder should be able to control their own pacing parameters only um, by using only the observed spending as, as information. And in particular, um, at each time t, the bidder has two pacing parameter, mu t and lambda t, and observes some vt, some value vt, but in practice, the price pt is not known uh, until the bid has been placed. So this could be a problem, but we show that even though the bidder does not know pt, um, the um, optimal thing that the, that the bidder can do is placing a bid equal to this value here, um, which is which has um, an additive correction for keeping distributional preferences into account, and then it's um, and then we apply the usual one plus mu t um, bid shading factor. So if the bidder does that, we can show that the uh, that we can recover the um, the regret that I was uh, discussing before, even if the bidder does not know pt uh, before placing the bid. Now here we have some experimental results. Um, so th these two particular uh, plots are for um, a breakdown, a binary breakdown that we build uh, depending on the type of mobile device originating the ad request. And as a baseline, we use the adaptive pacing framework by Balsero and Gore. And uh, on, the, on the left, you can see that um, as expected, the adaptive pacing is not able to take distributional preferences into account. And so the regret that it accumulates grows linearly over time. And on the right, you can see the total variation distance between the realized distribution of impressions and the target distribution, which is one half, one half in this case. Um, you can see that our algorithm performs um, good over time because it's always um, close, to, close to zero. Whereas the um, adaptive pacing algorithm uh, has, a has a realized distribution of impressions, which is close to the, um, let's say, to the, to the input distribution of the underlying data. So that's, um, that's it, and I'm, take and I'm happy to take any uh, questions.